500 million years ago, fungi colonized Earth. Today, Bitcoin is colonizing our financial system using similar innovations. Let me explain. This is a story of how symbiotic relationships can change the course of history forever. Just as fungi and plants formed a symbiotic relationship to successfully colonize dry land, humans can form symbiosis with Bitcoin to improve individually and to advance our species. Hey guys, Drew again. I turned the most important articles on Bitcoin into documentaries so more people can learn from them. This video was based on Bitcoin is the mycelium of money by Brandon Quidham. Bootstrapping life on Terra Incognita. 500 million years ago, all biological life lived in the oceans. Dry land as we know it was a sterile volcanic wasteland devoid of life. That is, until plants and fungi formed a faithful partnership that changed the course of history forever. This symbiotic partnership created a cascade of evolutionary forces leading to the creation of all terrestrial life, including Homo sapiens. Fast forward to modernity. Humans now organize around network-based technologies, such as the internet and Bitcoin, which are reincarnations of the ancient mycelial archetype out of which we emerged. Take a deep breath. Life is amazing. Okay, so how did we get here? Like human settlers, organisms colonizing new territory are most vulnerable in the early days. In order for fungi to colonize dry land, they needed to secure a reliable food source. Fungi effectively domesticated photosynthesis machines, or algae, to harness a self-sustaining food source. We can think of these algae as little solar panels bolted onto fungal networks, which made colonizing virgin dry land possible. Soon after getting established, the fungi began digesting the volcanic rock upon which they sat. This ultimately liberated valuable nutrients which were then traded with other fungi, algae, bacteria, etc. Together, these early settlers bootstrapped life on dry land. Let's see how this compares to Bitcoin. How Satoshi Bootstrapped Embryonic Bitcoin In order to colonize the internet, or terra incognita, with a new form of money, Satoshi needed to form a symbiotic partnership. Fortunately, he found the perfect partnership and made a series of wise decisions that maximized Bitcoin's chance of survival during the bootstrapping phase. How Satoshi partnered with the algae to bootstrap Bitcoin's life on the internet. High early issuance rate disproportionately rewarded early adopters. The early issuance rate might have even been too aggressive. Launched on the cryptography mailing list. If anyone could incubate Bitcoin, it was the cypherpunks on that email list. Timing the launch of Bitcoin during the 08-09 financial crisis. Was this just blind luck? Satoshi's message in the Genesis block, Chancellor on the second brink of bailout, or a rallying cry to gain ideologically motivated supporters. Mutualism or parasitism, examining the cypherpunk Satoshi symbiosis. Were the algae complicit in the fungal partnership or mutualism, or were the fungi taking advantage of the algae's ability to make the food at the expense of the algae, or parasitism. It appears to be mutualism. The algae may have been initially kidnapped, but in exchange for photosynthesizing, they gained a mycelial security system and the opportunity to colonize a new niche. Were the cypherpunks complicit, and did they benefit in the partnership or mutualism? Or did Satoshi take advantage of the cypherpunks because he needed an initial distribution strategy, or parasitism? Most cypherpunks dismissed Bitcoin initially. However, a select few, most notably Hal Finney, jumped on board. Considering they were the first to learn about Bitcoin, they had a chance to acquire Bitcoin's native monetary units in exchange for the marginal electricity cost to mine them, or essentially nothing. With the advantage of hindsight, acquiring Bitcoin during the first few years would lead to wealth beyond measure. Evolution by Natural Selection With the initial conditions of life on land set into motion, the Fungal Plant Alliance can start welcoming new market participants or organisms to enter the ecosystem. Fungi interact with the world through chemistry. They secrete enzymes to externally digest their environments. Volcanic rock was the only restaurant in town. These early fungi liberated molecular resources by metabolizing the volcanic rock upon which they stood. This enabled a proto-economy made up of primitive fungi, plants, and bacteria. 
They traded essential molecules required for carbon-based life forms, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. Fungi were essentially turning rocks into fungible biology tokens. These biology tokens were then traded on top of mycelial rails, connecting all nearby life. Fungi both created the market and facilitated trade, leading to an explosion of biodiversity on dry land. Bitcoin enables a new economic paradigm. Just as novel organisms emerge via speciation to occupy newly created niches on dry land, Bitcoin evolves its DNA, or code, to produce new phenotypes, or novel features, to take advantage of new niches. In other words, Bitcoin enables novel financial use cases that were not possible before. This increases the size of the economic pie, thus generating wealth for society. Novelty provided by Bitcoin The first and only implementation of absolute scarcity, which is hard to overstate. A global, near-instant, apolitical settlement system. Neutral money not easily captured by special interests. Uncensorable medium of exchange for black slash gray markets. Democratization of basic financial services. Non-sovereign store of value with negligible barrier to entry. Bitcoin to mycelium improve trade. Mycelium networks act as a resource transport layer and communications network connecting organisms in the biosphere. This enables organisms to voluntarily trade resources and knowledge across species lines. Increasing trade leads to increased specialization or division of labor, further increasing biodiversity or wealth and resilience in the ecosystem. Currently, our governments form economic monopolies which prevent many citizens from accessing the global markets. Think about all the unproductive human capital siloed in countries like Iran, Venezuela, and Argentina. Without access to a common economic language, or Bitcoin, many people are unable to participate in global trade. As Bitcoin becomes ubiquitous, it unleashes human productivity leading to increased innovation, specialization, and trade. We're already seeing some basic examples such as freelancers in Venezuela using Bitcoin as a bridge currency to access US dollars, which effectively evades financial controls. Bitcoin enables economic evolution by natural selection. Darwinian evolution by natural selection is a biological engine designed to reward successful actors and eliminate unsuccessful actors. When the antelope gets eaten by the lion, it dies. No one bails out the antelope. Nature has skin in the game. This feedback loop is crucial. Individuals are fragile in order to ensure the system is anti-fragile. Market-based economics is an engine designed to seek more efficient uses of capital by rewarding successful ventures and punishing the unsuccessful. However, our current form of capitalism is more like cronyism, or as Travis Kling said, socialism for the rich. Instead of letting companies fail, we bail them out. This results in broken incentives, which create a moral hazard, making the entire system more fragile. Not to mention, disproportionately hurting the working class. Heads I win, tails you lose. A sound money system, like Bitcoin, improves this economic engine by tightening the feedback mechanism that rewards value creation and punishes failure. In a Bitcoin world, Bailouts aren't really possible because monetary expansion is restrained by a fixed monetary base. Bitcoin ensures individual people slash companies are fragile in order to ensure the economic system remains anti-fragile. In other words, Bitcoin increases economic skin in the game, which improves the feedback loop leading to economic evolution by natural selection. Economic Darwinism for the win. Humans begin to settle down. One especially relevant fungal organism, known as Saccharomyces cerevisiae, otherwise known as brewer's yeast. Human agriculture appears to have begun around 11,500 years ago, although it might be much older. Interestingly, the first crops you cultivated were also the best grains for brewing beer. This begs the question, did we settle down for food slash ability, or to brew more beer? Turns out, fermented drinks, beer, wine, etc., provided a safe way to stay hydrated as water often contained pathogens that killed ancient man. Although we didn't know it at the time, humans formed symbiotic relationships with fungi in order to produce healthy drinking options 
that saved many lives. Unbeknownst to most moderns, we still heavily rely on our fungal allies today. Without fungi, say goodbye to all beer, wine, chocolate, bread, and many medicines such as penicillin. Like ancient man partnered with fungi to survive, us moderns have a similar opportunity to partner with Bitcoin. Achieving symbiosis with Bitcoin We've established how both fungi and Bitcoin symbiotically partner with other organisms to bootstrap life and build anti-fragile ecosystems. Now let's finish up by exploring how humans can partner with Bitcoin to improve individually and to advance our species. The real problem of humanity is the following. We have Paleolithic emotions, medieval institutions, and godlike technology. Money is the most important coordination mechanism for society, and our existing fiat system is driving our species off a cliff. Fiat money has appeared periodically throughout history. However, it's the exception, not the rule. Throughout most of history, humans coordinated around a free market for money, gold and silver mainly. Time to wake up from our fiat money coma. It all starts with individuals forming symbiosis with Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the best performing asset of the last decade. This created unimaginable wealth for early adopters. Besides financial gain, individuals also can benefit from Bitcoin in other ways. Interestingly, the values imbued into Bitcoin seem to rub off on its adherence. As a deflationary asset, Bitcoin teaches us to delay consumption today in order to reap greater benefits tomorrow, or a low time preference. In a world fulfilled with uncertainty, Bitcoin provides us something to be optimistic about. Rather than change our system from the inside, we can put our energy towards a parallel system. Cryptography is fundamentally about defense. Bitcoin is the largest implementation of public key cryptography the world has ever seen. A world with strong cryptography shifts the balance of power towards defense. Defense from tyranny, censorship, overarching governments, and surveillance capitalism. Cryptography allows us to assert our natural rights. Bitcoin protects free speech, ensuring we can vote with our money. Free speech is the foundation of open societies. Forming symbiosis with Bitcoin preserves freedoms for our future generations, a cause worth fighting for. Bitcoin metabolizes fiat infrastructure. We can use fungi to clean up oil spills, halt erosion, create natural pesticides, and even decompose nuclear waste at Chernobyl. In a similar manner, Bitcoin can be used to clean up our dilapidated fiat infrastructure. We're experiencing a period of unprecedented monetary expansion. Bitcoin, as a fixed supply monetary good, serves as a counterforce to unfettered money printing. Short term, individuals using Bitcoin to avoid capital controls and hedge against local currency risk. Long term, Bitcoin may force conservatism on the central banks, starting with developing nations. In the richest country in the world, America, average people work for 40 years and never get ahead. The legacy system was designed to siphon wealth from the bottom to the top, most notably during each financial crisis. Since time is money, this forced wealth transfer system should be considered systemic time theft. Make no mistake about it. We should be radicalized by this. Every time you buy Bitcoin, you're selling dollars. It's time to join the peaceful revolution. Bitcoin wears risk on its sleeve. Rather than persist in an opaque financial system designed to enrich the few at the expense of the many, let's embrace a more transparent financial system. A system where risks are laid bare for all to see, rather than buried under bureaucracy and deception. Fiat money is an inorganic system similar to a monocrop industrial farm, centrally planned, susceptible to disease, unsustainable, and fragile. Fiat offers short-term price stability at the expense of long-term systemic risk. In other words, we don't account for the fat tail risks such as banks blowing up or global pandemics. Both examples lead to wealth transfer, furthering wealth gaps. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is an organic system similar to an old growth rainforest, fierce competition, incremental growth, sustainable and anti-fragile. Bitcoin accepts short-term price volatility in exchange for long-term systemic stability. Bitcoin enables an anti-fragile monetary system, a huge win for humanity. 
Bitcoin promotes energy independence. Bitcoin has an insatiable demand for low-cost energy. Miners scour the earth for cheap energy assets, acting as the energy buyer of last resort. This incentivizes innovation in low-cost energy production, such as excess natural gas and stranded hydroelectric. Hash rate has been steadily rising, even when price is not. Bitcoin miners are inherently long Bitcoin. What do the miners know that you don't? Rather than putting our heads in the sand, it's time to form a partnership with reality. Let's assume Bitcoin continues its monetization path. Eventually, Bitcoin mining becomes a matter of national security. Those countries who produce their own energy and mine Bitcoin will have further geopolitical advantage over countries reliant on importing energy. This creates another incentive for nations to secure local energy sources, whether from fossil fuels, nuclear plants, renewables, or otherwise. Long term, a world with more localized energy production is a more robust world. Like fungi, Bitcoin is an invisible membrane, improving the health of the ecosystem it occupies. Humanity will coalesce on neutral money. The current geopolitical game rewards those who exert influence over money production. This means large powerful states, politicized money, and special interest groups competing for influence. Give me control of a nation's money, and I care not who makes the laws. Instead, Bitcoin is a neutral money, a system designed to prevent special interests from exerting undue influence over the money. This creates a more fair game. But why would any government give up control of their printing press? In a post-dollar regime, nation states won't agree on a new reserve currency. Logically, each state prefers to settle debts in their own currency. We're already seeing cracks in the dollar hegemony coming out of places like China, Russia, and Iran. Bitcoin is well suited for this problem. Bitcoin is fully auditable, hard capped, and offers a final settlement quickly. The perfect neutral money for untrusting nation states to settle debts. Under this light, Bitcoin is money for enemies. It's time to upgrade humanity by forming symbiosis with Bitcoin. Let's wrap up. The story of life on Earth can be summed up as success comes to those who form symbiotic relationships with network-based organisms, particularly fungi. As humble apes, it's our duty to form a symbiotic relationship with Bitcoin. We must strive to understand this phenomenon so that we may shepherd her through her adolescence. Just like fungi colonizing dry land was the catalyst for biological evolution on Terra, Bitcoin is a catalyst for human evolution. Let's embrace Bitcoin or suffer the fate of the dinosaurs.